Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part four for this news bulletin today, Monday, November 26, 2012. All right, I'm gonna continue here with this kind of um, uh, political fallout, secession and stuff like that. Cuba, Venezuela, Russia, and China now more free than America in notable ways. So I'm reviewing all the breaking news over the last few months and looking for the big picture of where America is headed. One pattern has emerged with striking regularity. America has quietly become less free in many ways and nations like Cuba, China, and even Venezuela. It says this is especially true in California where justice has become a joke and the power of the state is unleashed in personal vendettas against innocent civilians uh, and citizens or subjects who have done absolutely nothing wrong other than refuse to bow down to the state-run tyranny. So yeah, they were talking about a man getting thrown in jail for four days for photographing pigs. Also, it says that another case, uh, raw milk or unpasteurized milk, um, a salesman or a farmer was jailed after being forced to sign a plea deal accusing him of a heinous crime of distributing unpasteurized milk. So he had uh, nearly four months in jail and being treated as a terrorist, denied nutrition to the point where he emerged looking like a Nazi war camp prisoner, then slapped with two felony charges, five years of probation, and three almost a quarter million dollar fine. The man has no way to pay because they raided his business at gunpoint, stole all his cash, and destroyed all the inventory of his business, including $50,000 in fresh food. There was greater food freedom in Russia, Cuba, and even China than in California, and the idea of arresting people for selling raw milk is unthinkable everywhere else in the world except for the United States of America. It goes on and says that the White House now created a secret kill list of American citizens to be assassinated by government agents. Also, signing the National Defense Authorization Act in 2011, he nullified due process and the right to a fair trial. American citizens can be named by the White House as being possibly involved with anything called terrorism, can be kidnapped, abducted, and taken away to secret government interrogation torture centers, where they can be held indefinitely without charge, without trial, without any civil rights or human rights. But hey, you're free, right? I love seeing those stickers uh, saying that, you know, think of that for um, fighting for your freedom, you know? Uh, like when uh, Stefan Mollen, you made a good point. Every war, you become less free. So that's actually uh, counterintuitive. It goes on and it says that um, uh, America is an illiterate society where the ability to read, write, or think critically has all but vanished. It's been replaced by a mass of zombified, brain-dead, obedient bootlickers who actually lined up and begged to be fitted with the TSA shock bracelets and even full-body cavity searches before they fly. Importantly, America has been uh, become the land of enslaved, illiterate masses because the American sheeple want to be enslaved. They beg to be told what to do, how to eat, how much water to flush in their toilets and what to believe about 9-11, the war on drugs, the war on terror, uh, vaccines and how they're not linked to autism or any other health effects, uh, public water fluoridation about how it's so good for your teeth and how it doesn't actually lower IQs, and every other grand illusion you can imagine. Then you have, are the feds preparing for civil war? It says, is the government preparing to put down widespread civil strife or uprising? But after the four years of the economic takeover, it goes on and says that uh, Americans have a low approval rating for their elected officials. So it says with governments that seemingly out of control, conspiracy theories are popping up about what's really going on. Of course, what we just talked about, the biggest one is the National Defense Authorization Act, or indefinite detainment of U.S. citizens. Second is the huge 2012 DHS ICE order rounds of ammunition. They're talking about hollow point rounds, which are designed specifically for killing people. Which is probably why the cop didn't, uh, or told that one individual was concealing that he couldn't carry those bullets, even though he could legally. Says the, the other side, 450 million round order is actually a contract for the next five years. Exhibit C, increased monitoring of social networks. So says here that uh, this undersecretary of DHS has explicitly stated that the agency has guidelines for monitoring social sites and that all information is archived. Uh, Senator Feinstein is concerned that intelligence agencies aren't monitoring public social sites as much as they could. So they, uh, some keywords are being monitored. Increased military training exercises in urban areas is Exhibit D. Is it possible? Yes. Is it legal for the military to intervene? Yes. Has this goal been confirmed by any government official? Of course not. Pretty interesting. They use this um, 
they use this reason, uh, lack of representation. Like I said before, I don't think it had anything to do with that. I think Freemasons, Illuminists, and the Forefathers, uh, you know, they, it's funny that they call them terrorists because, uh, you know, they, prop uh, they basically use propaganda and re-education to rewrite history and, you know, say um, that they were great people. But at the same time, uh, they could have been actually been uh, Illuminati agents. Um, there to uh, trigger a revolution that most people didn't actually want. But they say it's for representation and that minorities are underrepresented. It said uh, that, uh, it says here, Latinos, 16% of the population, only have 5% of representation, and African Americans, 12% population, have 8%. I would, I would just, this is just really rough, of course, um, but I would imagine that, uh, you know, the good 30% or so. Uh, the representation that Zionist Jews get could actually go to the the minorities that uh, that live here that actually have more rep, uh, p more people more population right why would less than one percent or two percent of the population have thirty percent representation in Congress well because they have a lot of money uh, uh, Mexicans and uh, and blacks don't have that so the article I say from November 16 twenty twelve ingress Google's strange new game. It goes on that Google Unit uh, created Ingress, a new global augmented reality game. John Hankey is the head of this uh, Niantic Labs, the Google Unit that created Ingress, a new global augmented reality game. It says that after graduating from the University of Texas, Hankey worked in foreign affairs for the U.S. government in Washington, D.C. and Southeast Asia. So it says nice and vague. So Hanky has a long association with the U.S. government to give you some background. It says it might be helpful to keep secrets in plain sight in mind as you wade into this one. In Ingress, Google wants people to be physically present at the locations that are in the game to confront a mysterious energy and to choose a side. The enlightened seek to embrace the power that this energy may bestow upon us. And... Uh, I don't know if they're talking about singularity and that and, and um, moving over to the cyborgs and avatars, but the resistance struggle to defend and protect what's left of our humanity. Associate Professor for uh, Electrical Engineering at McCormick School of Engineering has looked into using the type of technology used in egress for what he calls soft control, saying we can soft control users with gaming or social network incentives to drive them where we want them. It's interesting because they talk about the resistance struggling to defend and protect what's left of our humanity because you had Dr. Kaku that made uh, uh, those statements about uh, uh, extraterrestrials and the three types of extraterrestrial civilizations and uh, he was basically bashing um, people that I would consider, my, you know, such as myself that want to maintain uh, the human species and maintain my race as uh, being terrorists. So that's how the that's how these elitists and that's how these um, people all over around the world. It's not just one country or anything. Uh, the powers that be in that and the super elites that want to turn into these gods by using machines and AI. Um, they they basically refer to anybody else that doesn't want that as terrorists. So, which is funny because that's what they use the, that word for now all the time. For people who are basically fighting these globalists, uh, you have what this coming out in 2012, Red Dawn. A group of uh, teenagers are looking to save their town from an invasion of North Korean soldiers. I think originally it was China, then they had to change it. But uh, what else do you have from Russia? Russian newspaper Obama was re-elected by illiterate society. Russian newspaper Pravda is blaming President Obama's re-election on an illiterate society who voted for him. Ignored by the West, as usual, a uh, speech by Vladimir Putin in 2009 gave insightful and helpful advice to help the world economy in saying that the world should avoid the Soviet mistake. Um, also, you had a Russian general uh, warning the United States. Uh, also, you had an ex-KGB, that Yuri Bezmenov warning Americans. Uh, just <laughs> see, you think they'd get it by now, but they don't. It says, recently Obama has been re-elected for a second term by an illiterate society, and he is ready to continue his lies of less taxes while he raises them, giving speeches of peace and love in the world while he promotes wars uh, as he did in Egypt, Libya, and Syria. And he plans his next war is with Iran as he fires or demotes his generals who get in the way. It was also the uh, Pravda uh, news source that wrote an article that I covered before. It was actually from, I think, 2008 or 2000, I think it was 2009 after Obama got reelected or elected, was that uh, Americans are basically going down the road of, uh, of communism or, or the Sovietism. Now, I don't know how much truth there is to that because, you know, you can... 
uh, you can call it whatever you want, label it whatever you want, but uh, they were basically warning Americans that they were begging for it. So, flexibility with Russia might not come easy for Obama in the second term. Says U.S. President Barack Obama famously told the Kremlin earlier this year that he'd have more flexibility dealing with Russia should he win a second term. This is their reason, but with Republicans keeping control of the U.S. House, Obama may have little room to accommodate the Kremlin on missile defense. Why Miami is becoming the Russian Riviera. Russian millionaires are increasingly a common sight inside uh, the giant homes for sale on the Miami coast. Latin Americans are fueling much of the recovery in the Miami real estate market. It's the rich Russians who are dominating the market for mega mansions. They're spending hundreds of millions of dollars on waterfront places and launching the next big land grab by the world's super rich. You have uh, analysts saying Russia-U.S. confrontation in Central Asia is undeniable. Military encirclement and global domination as Russia counters U.S. missile shield from the seas. The Pentagon, the U.S. Pentagon, is working to encircle Eurasia and surround the Eurasian Triple Entente composed of China, Russia, and Iran for every reaction. However, there is a counter-reaction. Neither one of these three Eurasian powers will sit idly as uh, passive U.S. targets. Their aim is to establish the nuclear uh, supremacy or primacy of the U.S. by neutralizing any Russia or Chinese nuclear response. About, talking about uh, Eurasia, we have this analyst saying Russia-U.S. confrontation in Central Asia is undeniable, referring to billions of uh, money spent on rearming uh, Kyrgyzstan, also with Tajikistan. There's a cannonball run for untapped Arctic reserves, the race for a uh, share of the enormous reservoirs of fossil fuels, an estimated 90 billion barrels of oil beneath Greenland's ice sheet in the Arctic Circle is heating up. It goes on, it says some four years, the U.S. Geological Survey came out with estimates of huge oil and gas reserves in the region. It's interesting because they say that the uh, it's heating up and they're blaming it on climate change. I mean, what if they're just like um, uh, just cooking and frying the ionosphere? Um, and causing it to be warmer. But it says the Danish Commonwealth, uh, Russia, Norway, Canada, and the U.S., Finland, and Sweden, and Iceland are also stakeholders in the Arctic Rim. It's worth noting that uh, India and China um, also have interest in this Arctic property and are going to sit by idle. November 2nd, 2012, Russia deploys Arctic troops. So they're attracting a lot of attention from the global community. They say that they uh, have promising prospects for the exploitation of the Arctic's natural resources. Warships of the Russian Black Fleet are ordered to stay in the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea. Fulfilling the orders, convoy of warships for Russia arrived in the eastern part of the Med for a possible evacuation of Russian citizens from the Gaza Strip in case of escalation of the Palestinian-Israeli armed conflict. This was from three days ago. Also, U.S. troops... Uh, ships to Mediterranean Sea from the 21st. The U.S. military confirmed it sent three naval warships and about 4,000 soldiers to the Eastern Med in response to the Gaza crisis. Let's not forget they've also um, uh, talked about sending 40,000 troops, the Pentagon that is, to Syria for the Syria, quote, takeover. A secret war between China and the U.S. for Africa's oil riches. I've covered this many times. Go in there and check this article out from oilprice.com. But uh, it's basically, yeah, it, the whole thing with Africa is between China and the United States for raping the resources. Yeah, it says both states are competing to secure their share of oil supplies in order to quench their addiction to the coveted black gold. Remember this, a Chinese group plans to construct a 200-acre Chinese city in Michigan from May 9th, 2012. Just to give you a little background, uh, China is it a military threat. It says no wonder China is nervous as Obama pivots. Much of Western media uh, basically concludes that uh, China has become an economic giant now intent on flexing its military muscles. And Global Research, their website, uh, tries to make the claim that it's all due to a reaction to Obama's new uh, Asian pivot, which they've been doing, building up uh, Australia in, in that area as well, signing trade, uh, tra uh, trade agreements with uh, these little uh, countries. It becomes clear that China is reacting in order to attempt to deal with uh, quite real threats to its future sovereignty rather than acting in an aggressive posture. China did land their first jet on an aircraft carrier on Sunday. A Cincinnati company fired 150 employees for not getting flu shots. China, a man who blew the whistle on the tainted milk scandal, has been killed after suffering two knife wounds. 
It looks like a carbon tax is a done deal for the United States, which is why Al Gore is saying avoid the fiscal cliff by imposing a carbon tax. Even though global warming stopped 16 years ago, and more scientists are coming out saying there's been no warming, poor nations are dismayed by the looming climate aid gap, which is why they redistribute the world's wealth through climate policy. Thank you.